to my channel it's your girl Janae Antoinette if you're new welcome so I know I haven't posted a video on my channel in a couple of months probably like two three months now but that's because of a couple of different things so number one I moved and also I'm starting my own candle business called Antoinette's Apothecary so my middle name is Antoinette Janae Antoinette like my channel these are kind of what some of my candles look like. I'm gonna do some bubble candles, body candles, concrete stone jar candles, and also glass candles that are half painted. So everything I make myself, jars, I make them, I pour the concrete myself, paint the concrete, make the wax, all that myself. So I'm kind of gonna be showing you guys how I do that. So let's get in to candle making. All right, so the type of candle that I am making are pillar candles. So it's just these like little bubble candles, body candles, and wax tarts. And with these kind of pillar candles, you wanna use pillar wax. It's basically just a harder wax, harder than soy. Let me show you the difference from soy and pillar wax. Okay, so this is a bubble candle I made using pillar wax. And then this is one I made using soy wax. So soy wax is a lot creamier and smoother and pillow wax is harder so the candle comes out smoother and it takes a shorter amount of time to set. This is what we are going to be making. All right, so first thing you need is a pot. So you're just gonna fill it up like an inch, half an inch, very little water and we put on the stove and just let that heat up um, because making candles is kind of like a double broiler kind of method. I use this pot, um, it is a milk pot specifically for candles. I got it from Hobby Lobby for about like $10, I think. Um, so I like to use this one. Um, you could also use a like, a like a glass pitcher and then you can put it in a pot as well. It's just this holds a lot more wax so I can make more candles at a time. And then have to measure out your wax. It's not this kitchen scale from like Walmart, I think. All right, so next I'm going to measure out my wax. And I've done this before, so I know that for, I'm making two bubble candles, one body candle, and one um, tart. That's gonna be, I mean, four candles for six ounces. So I know that's uh, one pound, 1.39 pounds of wax. I'm gonna just do 140, because I know sometimes you need a little extra. So all I'm doing is scooping out the wax, and then I'm tearing off my pot on my scale and measure out my wax. So this is for four candles. I'm making eight, so I'm gonna do um, two different scents. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the pot to heat up so that it kind of melts and I can add more wax so it's not all the way at the top and takes forever to melt. All right, so now that the wax is melting, I'm going to prep my mold. For these bubble candles, you need to put the string through them. I just take a large needle and I just cut a little bit off and then poke it through the mold. Same thing with these body candles. I'm gonna say, these molds, they're good, but a two-part mold for a body candle is way better. If you get your hands on one, get a two-part mold because taking them out is a hassle. You gotta really be careful with them. It's taking me so many tries to get these candles out the mold. Um, you can split them down the back if you want, but you're just gonna have to secure them when you go to remake them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my strings through the mold and set up those candles. All right, so now that we have the wicks in the candle, I'm just going to take some clothespins. You see how there's like a little hole inside that clothespin? You're just gonna put the wick through there just to secure the wick so it stays upright. And then the same for the body candles as well. Make sure you put something under your mold so that you catch any spills. Be careful when you um, poke the hole through the thing because for one of my um, bubble candles, 
have like a massive tear in it so i can't use that one at all because it just leaks through um so just be careful with that all right so one of the most important steps in candle making is measuring out the fragrance oil for my candles like i said i'm doing two different scents right now so i just have these two pitchers i'm going to pour each fragrance in these in these pitchers so I'm just gonna tear it and then pour exactly how much fragrance oil I need for my candles. I use the candle calculator app, but you guys can calculate it yourselves if you want or use the app. So for my candles, I like to do 9% fragrance oil to wax. So I'm just gonna pour out my fragrance oil for each candle. All right, so now it's time to add the color in the fragrance oil. All right, so the color that I use is avocado, and I use dye blocks instead of the drops, just because they're cheaper, it's like a dollar for this block. And it says on the package, one dye block colors two pounds of soy wax or four pounds of paraffin wax. Um, but the colors that I'm going for are like pale colors, so I'm not gonna use a lot. So this is what it looks like. All I do is take a knife and then chip off a little bit and then I just add it in here like that and then once you add the hot wax and mix it all up you can see the color. So now that the wax is completely melted I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of minutes till it reaches a cooler temperature and I can pour it in the plastic containers because I don't want them to melt. When you pour the wax too hot it can create air bubbles and cracks in your candles and you don't want that so you just want to make sure you let your wax sit for a little bit till it reaches i like to pour my wax at 110 degrees around that um that is the temperature i found most successful so i'm just gonna let that sit all right now that the wax is semi set set it's still a little hot but that's okay because i'm using wax dye blocks so the wax does need to be a little bit hot in order for that um, dye block to melt. So I'm just going to pour this in the cup on the scale till it reaches the ounces that I need for the candles. Now I'm just going to mix this wax up and the fragrance oil, make sure everything is combined. Okay, so this is what everything is looking like. I'm just gonna let that set. All right guys, so now that these are set, we can go ahead and take them out. I already took two out because I'm impatient, but these are what they look like. So the colors I'm kind of going for are very pastel um, kind of colors, like just very light. That's the kind of vibe I'm going for. So I have two more to take out. I'm gonna just show you guys kind of how I take them out. So I kind of just pop the sides. I just pop the sides out like that. And then I just kind of wiggle it out. And there we go. 
I'm gonna go ahead and take that other one out. All right, so once your candles are all out of the molds, you just wanna trim the wicks off. All right, so now it's time to take the body mold out, and this is by far the hardest part of making these because um, they are very um, fragile. So you just gotta be really careful, take your time. I basically just peel it back and then just kind of wiggle them out. So once you start making them, you'll kind of figure out which is the best, best method for you. And then boom, there you have it. A pink lady. Looks so freaking cute. Guys, so these are the final products. The arm kind of came off on this one, so I tried to hot glue it back on, but it didn't really work out. But that is what it looks like. Like I said, when you take these out, you have to be really careful because the arms have a tendency to fall off. Um, so, there you go. These though come out pretty easy because they don't have arms. So if you are trying to do body molds and you can't find any two part molds and you have to get those type of molds, get the ones with no arms because the ones with arms, a hassle. But that is that. And then these are the bubble candles. And then these are the wax melts that I made. All right guys, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, make sure you're liking the video, commenting, subscribing. That really helps my channel out. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I promise I'll be more active now. Um, it's just, I am trying to switch over my channel to more um, concept that really fits me like my business and lifestyle things like that so i'm really excited for what i have in store for my channel and i hope you guys are too so thank y'all so much for watching and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day